Hey, what's going on everybody? Brandon Charleston here, coming at you with another quick tutorial. I'm actually currently on travel on active duty orders, and so this is why the background's a little bit different. But nonetheless, at least wanted to record a very quick uh, tutorial for you guys, so that way you can still continue to learn and I can make my contributions to helping you leverage AI and automation. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a very high level on how you can really dabble your toes into all things AI automation when it comes to platforms such as Clay, which I post about uh, for a number of different things and workflows. And then also, um, most people are pretty familiar with Zapier, and you may have heard of it. Essentially, it's an automation, no-code platform to where you can take their 7,000 plus integrations and being able to do what you call Zaps to automate uh, different tasks and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how you can uh, send information from Clay to Zapier, and then also vice versa, where you can take it from Zapier Zapier and send it to Clay. And so uh, we're going to dive in a little bit and then I'm going to show you from a technical perspective how that actually looks. And then that way you can take your workflow, you know, any way and shape and form. And so as you get more advanced in AI and automation, and obviously if you want to work together with me, please reach out. Uh, but there's a number of different platforms such as Zapier. And then to step up to that essentially is called make.com. To me, that's a little bit more advanced and kind of middle grade, if you will. And then a, a far more technical um Automation software is N8N, which I definitely love, and I'm all things uh, when it comes to that stuff. And so, if you can really understand, you know, what is possible as far as leveraging automation and putting AI, which is essentially logic and reasoning towards that, you'll really be able to streamline a lot of processes uh, within your whatever you're doing, business or even personal life, uh, such as what it's done for me. And so, uh, so yeah, I encourage you to walk, watch this uh, video all the way through. And of course, if you have questions, let me know. So let's go ahead and dive in. So uh, I'm in Zapier and so uh, if you haven't already set up an account definitely encourage you to poke around see the different type of integrations they have. Obviously 7,000 is a lot so they do have an AI um, you know beta thing here that you can essentially say I want to do this and do this right. It's kind of like IFTTT if this then that. Um, there's a lot of different things. So um, essentially you can say just something like this. When I add a reaction to a Slack message, then I want to do this, right? So it's 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 uh, getting tasks done and really being able to know what steps are repeatable and so that way they can be automated. So, so um, going into Clay, uh, we have uh, just a very basic Clay table. And so I've just put in my name, you know, no plug or anything like that, but uh, just obviously a very easy use case here. And so I just put my name, email, LinkedIn profile, and then my website. And then to essentially bring data from Clay and send it to Zapier, you're gonna just add the enrichment and you're just gonna type in HTTP API and you're gonna bring in uh, this integration. Now this does require the Explorer program. And so if you're not familiar with the this integration, this essentially is giving you the keys to whatever integration you could possibly want. If they have an API or public API or really any API, which a number of, pretty much every software has an API, but if it has a public API, you can definitely interact and send data to and from uh, Clay. So um, essentially uh, 200, if you're not familiar uh, from a technical perspective, is a good number. If you get any other number outside of 200, there's usually an issue, but you're looking for like 200, 201, things like that. And so we're gonna go into here and what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna do a post request, okay? And then you're gonna go into uh, Zapier and this is just a very simple workflow on com data coming in and then going back out. So you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna catch a webhook uh, by Zapier. And then uh, all I'm gonna do is when you do the catch hook, right? So it's gonna essentially give you a URL. So let me see if I can pull this up again. Um, let's uh, duplicate this. See if I can recreate it. All right, so we're just gonna, I just did send to a webhook. So we're gonna do a catch, okay? So we're gonna hit try it. Cool. All right, so hopefully this is populating. There it is. Okay, so we're listening. So what you're going to want to do is this, we've generated a custom URL webhook, right? So you're going to copy this. And then all you're going to do 
is go into your uh, HTTP API and you're going to simply paste that in there, that, that uh, webhook. Now when it comes to the body, so when you send a webhook, you're sending just some sort of call, right? Uh, you're basically saying, hey, hello, you're knocking on the door. That's essentially what you're doing. Uh, you're knocking on the door of some other software to say, hey, you know, I have something for you, right? You're basically the postman, uh, you know, coming with information, coming with a, uh, a book or a Christmas present or something, right? So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is if you have something to send, you need to put it in the body. So a lot of times uh, what this is, is a JSON format, J-S-O-N, it stands for JavaScript uh, Onset Notation, or Object Notation, J JavaScript Object Notation. Uh, stand corrected here. Um, military orders, you know, a little tired. But anyway, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with the curly brackets and then you have two things here. And in any sort of JSON formatting, you want to have an open curly bracket and then a closed curly bracket. And so what that looks like, and then um, you have, this is gonna be what you call the key, and then this is the value. So if I were to type out any JSON format, I'd go here, and just for next line formatting, I like to keep it organized. You're gonna wanna have the key, and then this is the value. Now, and then close curly bracket. And anytime you're gonna send a payload, you want to, uh, let's say I do key value, so what you wanna put it in quotes, uh, but there's a caveat here, so hear me out. So let's do, like for this one, we did name, and then essentially if I were to do, uh, this is the dynamic token here, but if I were to send it here, I would just type it in. If it's the raw value, like as it is, you're gonna to wanna to put it in quotes because that's just proper formatting. And if you're running into issues, typically what I like to do, just to really just get, get it done, is use ChatGPT or uh, Claude to really help you, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, identify the inconsistencies or maybe you're missing a comma or a curly bracket or something like that uh, to help you like properly format it. And so if you're sending raw value or raw data, uh, you want to have it in JSON format, and then you're gonna do the key, which is name, essentially, I'm sending the name, and then this is the con this is the the value of that of that content, so of that uh, key. So um, when you send data from here, I'm going to hit slash, and then I'm going to do this, right? So if I'm doing one, which is this is just a test, then I'm done here. I could do curly brackets. However, if I'm sending more information, I'm going to do a comma. I'm going to go next, and let's say I'm going to do email. So I'm going to do email colon and then I'm just gonna do this and then let's say for here I'm gonna do comma and I'm gonna do LinkedIn colon and then I'm gonna do the variable there and for SNGs I'm gonna do website colon and then I'm gonna send the website so and then uh, after that there's no comma needed okay so I'm gonna save that and just because we're building a new one we're gonna copy this. Oh, getting ahead of myself here. And then I'm going to hit endpoint. Again, we're doing a post message or a post request. I'm gonna save. And we're just gonna rerun. We're gonna see what that looks like. Alright, cool. So it worked, and then so we can see that it's success. Uh, that token there it has sent. And then we can see, made test trigger, okay, cool. So you can see request A, and I've sent all the data right here. So obviously the key, we have the key and then the value that has come through. So I have successfully sent data from Clay over to Zapier. And then you can add any sort of step. Uh, you can add your CRM, you can add your Slack, you can add whatever you wanna do pick 7,000 of them, right? So I have essentially taken data from Clay and through API calls, I have sent it where the webhook, the catch URL, uh, basically like I'm throwing a ball. So I've thrown a ball full of data uh, to uh, you know whoever the software is, Zapier in this instance, uh, the data as a payload has carried over as a result of that and then I can interpolate or do whatever I wanna do. Now, how do we get this data with all these things, let's say you have a scenario where you want to take from Zapier to Clay, right? This could be a number of things. So, and then uh, you may 
want to take data from your CRM that's not directly integrated with Clay, you may want to take a Slack message. I mean, 7,000 integrations. I mean, there's, pick, pick your poison, right? But you want to send that now to Clay. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to do a custom request in webhooks. Okay, that's what this integration is. And you can see this is a lot like the HTTP API integration that we have here in Clay, which means you have uh, a lot of ways to break things, uh, but a lot of flexibility, right? And so your chances of getting an error are probably high, but I'm gonna help you out. So uh, what you're gonna do, I've already done it in, in this instance. So we have data now from Zapier that we now want to throw back to clay right you have you're the postman or you know you have you have a package full of data you have all this data in zapier and now you want to hand it over to your clay buddy to say here is the data right so what we're going to do is this is just a catch hook and this is a very simple webflow to go back to clay so now what we want to do is we want to start a new table and you're just going to uh, open up a new table for clay. So we'll just duplicate it, um, this tab here. Uh, we'll go home and then we are going to do new table. And you can see right here, import data from webhook. So just go ahead and click on this. We're gonna do add new table. Let's see here, Let's up here. just so I can make sure. All right, now you can see right here, webhook URL. This is the catch URL. Okay, we're gonna do a post request. We're just gonna copy this. And we are going to do a post request. And we are going to URL. Now just for consistency um, and to prove that it works, uh, let's see here. We have, I have already set it up on this particular one. Now this is the catch. Um, you want to put your URL here, right? I've tested through a number of things. This is how I got to work because essentially now what we want to do is we want to take, we have our URL. So now this is where we want to throw it. Now, what data do we want to send as a payload? So we are, uh, this is the data. So I had data passed through as false. Okay, the data is here. You can see it's in JSON formatting, which is uh, which is what you want to do. Okay, so I have the open curly bracket, and again, I have my key and then the value. the 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 catch is is in Clay, you don't put the data in quotes because they do it for you for proper JSON formatting. However, in Zapier, you need to put it in quotes. Hear me out on that, all right? Um, and you'll see why in here in a second, because if, if it it may send a 200 you know response like saying hey all right good to go your data works or your connection works, but you're gonna go into Clay and you're gonna see zero of your data has carried over because your proper JSON formatting wasn't there or you may get an error right or you may get a 400 error. So um, essentially just type it out and then uh, you're gonna just carry the name you know uh, or whatever data you want to carry over. And again, you want to have comma as similar to what I mentioned before. If there's more information, you comma. Next one, you do, you know, whatever sequential data that you want to do as far as proper formatting is concerned. Okay, I left all these good to go. Um, now, when it comes to uh, setting this, you're going to want to put headers in here, and so you're just going to essentially put content type, and then the value is application JSON, right? So you're going to want to just copy this, just put that in the headers because this tells the API that, hey, I have a payload to come across, right? So I want to do that. And then uh, you just hit test, okay? Data in, data out, and it says okay. And so what will happen is it's going to send the data, you're going to catch the webhook, okay? And you can see the payload has transferred over. My name as a payload has pushed through the data uh, or the API and it came, came through. And then I could just sit, simply add as column. You can just you know map it to a column or whatever. And then now you have your workflow successfully from Zapier over to Clay where you could do all the things in Clay, right? Uh, to be able to funnel through and start your workflow there. Now, just as a, um, people always ask me, you know, okay, why would I use Clay or which one do I use? Like Zapier, Clay, uh, you know, there's Make, there's anything, and there's all these automation things. And so a lot of times people ask me, where do I even start and what do I do, right? 
And I think the best way for me uh, to explain and kind of really understand is you want to audit your workflows and steps about what like admin tasks you do and what sort of things are needed to be accomplished simply as data exchange. A lot of times in everything that we do, no matter what, you know, if it's your personal life or your business or calendar invites and all these things, right? There's there's steps involved. And so what you want to ask yourself is what is an instance or a scenario that is repeatable that uh, is basically data exchange? Am I doing research on somebody? Am I doing uh, am I gathering information? Uh, am I doing any sort of non-emotional uh, sales connection here where I'm just simply uh, you know, t- interpolating and processing data? Those are scenarios that you can automate. Now, as far as picking um, you know, what platform you wanna do that with, um, basically Clay is a spreadsheet Zapier, right? So it is a, a way for you to do all the zaps on a table. Uh, so you could essentially do a lot of what you do in Clay in Zapier, but a lot of times, especially if you're going for a lead uh, prospecting where you're doing like a cold email outreach or LinkedIn automation or anything that involves a list, Zapier is not gonna be the best use case because that's a lot of zaps. That's gonna really drain your pocket. Um, and it's not it's, it's not exactly flexible or scalable because a lot of times you're going to have a list and you can't really just upload that list and send it to Zapier, right? It's not it's not effective because you could do like Google Sheets, for example, but it, it's really just going to your workflow is just going to be a mess, right? When it comes, to, there's better solutions out there. Um, so. Uh, in this case, when you're working with a list or it's going to be, you know, a, a ton of just leads or a ton of like instances where it's a webhook like I showed you here uh, in Clay, that Clay would be the best use case for that. So uh, on the contrary, if you're doing uh, some sort of workflow where it involves a CRM or maybe a Slack notification and you want to do a step about a calendar invite or something like that uh, where it's more ops wise, like backend ops kind of thing, it might be appropriate to do something like a Zapier or a make.com. Um, and if you really want to get technical, N8N is the other one um, where you can really introduce uh, a l- number of different things, including like AI agents and stuff like that. And those are some of the things I'm kind of developing as well. Uh, so really, you can not only take a step to go from A to B all the way through, but you can actually uh, help, you, you could put LLMs and AI in those steps to be able to make decisions, uh, guide it in a certain scenario. There's a number of ways. And that's where the art and science comes in, you know, uh, when it comes to AI and automation, right? So all of that to say, not to get uh, too long-winded with this video, but at a very high level, that is how you take Clay, information and data from Clay, set it to Zapier, and then on the vice versa, this is how you take it from Zapier over to Clay. So uh, I appreciate you watching all the way through. I hope this video helped. Uh, Again, I appreciate uh, all the support and everything. Uh, Please like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment below of uh, something that I missed or something that you'd like to see as well. Um, If you'd like to work with me, I run an AI and automation uh, B2B cold outreach. And so if you want to work with me, just shoot me a message or shoot me an email uh, down below. Uh, But thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, happy automation. See you.